Well, here we are. It's Friday, June 17th, 2022. And uh, this is, of course, the uh, weekly video we do. Take a look back, see what went on in uh, uh, the auction market uh, over in, in Paris. There was a very good sale. We're going to get to it in a second. That took place at Sotheby's. It was the Arts of Asia sale. And uh, for those of you that followed it, you know what happened. It was, it was uh, they had some great things and some st stunningly good results, which was very nice to see after the uh, sort of lackluster sale that took place in Hong Kong a couple of weeks ago. They had good things. There was nothing wrong with the material. There just wasn't a lot of uh, inspired buying, I guess, is the best way to put it. Uh, and we'll take a look at the global page results. There's a lot going on. A lot of stuff got added this week in particular, um, and we made some changes. So uh, the, the, there's more material on there. And uh, and uh, just those of you that use the page, uh, the, uh, the the video for this week's, uh, for the global page users, is, is uploaded and um, um, ready over there. All right, on the on the on the landing page. So let's take a look and see what's going on. The catalog for the Sotheby sale we're going to talk about here is right here. Uh, for some reason, the way they're configuring them now, the uh, cover doesn't appear anymore. It's it's they show they show a blank page. I'm not sure why, but um, uh, it's it's a it's a good catalog. Let's see here. Uh, there it is. This is it. And the show the back page shows up now more than the front. But the cover lot of this sale was phenomenal. And uh, we're going to talk about that in a second. And there were some other lots that did very, very, very well. Uh, and there were some things that were relatively inexpensive. Um, go over there and uh, go to the Sotheby site and check the post auction results. There were some good buys in there and um uh and and it seemed to go under the radar a couple of things number a few things didn't sell so they may be available also for post-auction uh, uh resale and uh the first thing that we're going to look at we'll get to that jade in a second is this this was rather surprising um there, there was a, a still enormous demand for uh, transitional wares. We've talked about it before, which is why you're seeing so many fakes turning up on the market. There are a lot of copies of transitional porcelains turning up on the market. Be very, very, very careful. Uh, uh, they're, they're being done in underglazed blue. They're doing them in Wukai. Uh, and, and, and a lot of them are getting through. Uh, I'm really shocked. Um, uh, uh, you know, if, if you don't know, if you're not f that familiar with transitional wares, uh, don't try to buy them right now um, from most of the sellers on the internet because the chances of them being authentic are, are pretty close to zip. Um, uh, but if you if you have the the the, the, the Shunzi book, you have the book from the Butler, the books from the Butler collections and all that, and you've studied up on it, you have a shot. But uh, if you don't have all those books and 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 have a good understanding of um, the characteristics of transitional wares, you're going to get taken, unfortunately. Uh, because the, the copies are excellent. They are absolutely stupendous. Um, I saw one um, a, a couple of weeks ago that I, I, I couldn't believe it was brand new. And, um, and it was, but I mean, I, it, we could tell it was brand new, but boy, it was good looking. <laughs> All right. So anyway, this this thing, a transitional a pair of transitional bottles, wasn't that that many years ago that these were worth three or four thousand dollars a piece, uh, two thousand dollars a piece. Uh, today, a pair in this sale, a pair of them sold for twenty two thousand six hundred and eighty euros, which is a pretty good price for a pair of transitional bottles. And these were those uh, gin bottles that were meant to go in boxes. Uh, they were they were made heavily for export. Um, and then on to this. This is the Kotan Green Jade Chin Lung Period. Came from um, uh, apparently the collection of, um, or had belonged to at one point, Mr. Guimet. And Guimet is the uh, man who had the collection that uh, uh, is now the Guimet Museum in Paris, the government owned museum of Asian art. It's an amazing museum. If you ever get to Paris, go to the Guimet. It is Mecca. I was there, uh, been there a couple times, and uh, uh, it's a fantastic place. It's just Asian art. It's absolutely fabulous. And it's interesting because when you walk out the front door of it, you run into a picture, you run into a giant bronze of George Washington mounted, mounted on a horse. And there's an interesting story about that too. So it's, it's, it's a, you do a double take when you come out of the museum, but it's a beautiful museum, underwent a major renovation about 20 years ago, and uh, it is just great. Uh, so anyway, you have this, this jade, extremely fine. Um, and it was part of a set originally of three uh, 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 this was the personal a personal seal to the Emperor Chinlung. He had many seals. So he didn't have just one seal. He had boxes and boxes and boxes of them. But uh, this this uh, came from uh, uh, Mr. Guimet originally, 
And uh, if that's the case, it probably uh, got looted from the Yuan Ming Yuan. There's a pretty good chance of it anyway. Uh, they, they never want to mention that anymore because it's embarrassing, but um, I think that's what it is. And uh, on that subject, um, on, the, on the looting of the uh, museum, um, we're working on a video right now. I'm trying to get it done. Um, we're going to talk about the, um, the looting of the Yuan Ming Yuan and how it happened. And uh, you, you, I, we're going to explain some things that most people don't generally know about it or, or that think they know about the, the opium war and the, the, and the subsequent looting of the Yuan Ming Yuan. But uh, it's, it's an interesting story. And we're going to put that up in the next, probably in the next couple of days, if not later today. At any rate, this was an amazing thing. Estimated at 100 to 150,000, sold for 2,213,000. And that just shows you how much interest there is. And um, um, I think some of the bidders are saying the quiet part out loud by what they paid for it, that this was a, uh, 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 a very important piece of jade. And, and I suspect it's going back to China. Uh, and then on to this was a, a, a magnolia stem cup, Qing Dynasty, 18th century jade, beautifully carved, absolutely splendidly carved, um, Qin Lung period, and uh, just ab uh, mind blogging like how beautiful this is snow white jade beautiful condition and uh, it was estimated at 20 to 30 thousand sold for 10 times more than 10 times its high estimate and this was not a big cup this thing was what was it four four and three quarter inches tall went for 327,000 euros significant money but a great object and the, the jades in the sale overall did great. There, there, there were some real heavy hitters here. And, and part of it is, is that, the, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, the association with the, with the, the looting of the Yuan Ming Yuan and jade, the jades that were taken, there were famously a lot of jade was stolen, and a lot of it ended up in Paris and uh, at the Fontainebleau and other collections uh, to do with the royal family, as well as private collections. And uh, this, this Chin Lung piece turned up as well, um, a, a, a really nice russet jade, archaistic ewer, um, but done in the, Ming in the Qing dynasty, superbly carved, just superbly carved. There's a couple of similar examples in the um, Palace Museum collection to this, uh, but this is amazing and has an absolutely stupendous stand and uh, it was estimated at two to three hundred thousand euros, doubled the high estimate. Those are the numbers that make, make auction houses smile. And then over to this, this was uh, one of the big, I think this might have been the second highest priced item in the sale. It was a, a really, really rare comparison, um, a cloisonne elephant with a, with a figure on it. And it was big. It was 20, how big is this? 20, 20 in a little over 20 inches tall. So this was a nice size thing. But absolutely superb, Chin Lung period, uh, fabulous quality, and, and in, in pristine condition, too. Look at the condition of this thing. Absolutely great. Um, a very, very rare thing. And uh, the audience loved it. It ended up selling for 819,000 euros, um, four times its high estimate. And uh, a, a splendid object. And you see, this is this gets back to the thing about making estimates. They don't mean anything um, um, in in the end. Uh, buyers know what something is worth, but and, and they're going to end up paying it. But the modest estimates, friendly estimates, encourage participation because you because you you know that the the, the minimum selling price is, is is reasonable. All right, and then on to this is the Baharava, uh, Baharava um, uh, uh, head from Nepal, 16th century, dated. 1598 and big. This thing was also, uh, how, it was like 20 inches, uh, 23 inches tall. This was a big, big bronze. 23 inches tall, beautiful condition, still set with the stones. Very often, you, I, I, I've seen these head, these, these, these models before, and all the stones, all the crystals and, and stones have been popped out of them. Um, and, and used for other things. Here, the stones are still in place. The quality is good. The, there's still pigment showing on the on the headpiece. Uh, just just a great thing, and a very powerful face. Uh, ended up selling for uh, had a forty to sixty thousand euro estimate. Sold for three hundred and fifty two thousand euros. So again, six over five times its high estimate. Almost six times its high estimate. And then on to this. This was one of my favorite things of the sale. It wasn't the most expensive. But I absolutely love the color of it. Um, 
Okay, back. Had a little interruption there. Neighbor called. Um, but one of my favorite pieces in the sale was this, and it wasn't because it was the, it wasn't the, the rarest. It wasn't the most expensive. It wasn't marked, but the color of this uh, 18th century uh, uh, bottle vase, pear-shaped bottle vase with this long neck, fine crackle at the top, and then and then flowing down is this absolutely beautiful, uh, nearly cherry red. Uh, glaze with striations in it. I thought this was just a great looking thing. And it was big. It was about 18 inches tall. This wasn't some nine inch vase. It was a big presentation vase. Very presentable. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. Uh, either it, it was made probably uh, either during the, uh, the, the late Kangxi period uh, up to the early Qinlung period. I don't think it was made after that. The bottom of it looks great. It's got this celadon glazed uh, crackle bottom. You see those on Kangxi pieces. You see them on, on, on a few Yongchen pieces and you see them on early Qinlung pieces, but uh, most often on Kangxi. And I thought this was just a, a really beautiful thing. Had a very low estimate, four to 6,000 euros. Uh, ended up selling for 30,000. But it was because of the color. The color was just absolutely splendid. And the piece was, like I said, it was big. It was, it was 17 and 3 eighths inches tall. So this was a nice big vase. And I, I just loved it. I just absolutely loved that. Um, and then on to this. This was uh, one of the one of the pieces that did very well. Also, it was a Kengshi Femi Ver um, uh, uh, a charger, and uh, this thing was pretty big. It was twenty one and seven eighths inches wide. This is like those. This is as big as those Amari uh, pieces made during the Meiji period in Japan. It's a beast of a plate, and um, uh, had a court scene on it. Uh, lots of activity. A lot of overglazed decoration. Uh, beautifully done. It looked like it was in nice condition. Not a lot of wear. The gilding was all intact. Uh, it had a lot going on for it. They got the bannerman in the scene and so forth. And it was uh, some sort of uh, a presentation of the court. Um, uh, Li Tong Do Bao Charger. And there is a uh, write-up on here explaining um, what this is and so forth. Very interesting story. Go go read it. And uh, it was estimated at twenty to 30,000 euros. It ended up selling for six times Basically six, almost well, five, uh, more than five and a half times its high estimate. But monstrous plate, seven, uh, 21 inch Kangxi chargers. Those are pretty rare. <laughs> Put it mildly. All right. And then over on the on the global pages, a lot was going on. We're going to run through some results because they had some they had some good sales. And um, we had this was the Leland Leland Little sale. Uh, they had this. Uh, this was uh, down in uh, there in uh, what is it? The North Carolina, right? Hill, Hillsboro, North Carolina. And uh, they had a, they have good sales down there. They do a pretty good job. Uh, they get they do good for, job with photography. They provide lots of images, which is a which is a fabulous thing. And they had this this Kangxi period jar, estimated at five hundred to a thousand dollars, which was of course very low. And uh, because they, they don't, they're not big on reserves there. Uh, this jar was 19 inches tall and somebody picked it up, I think cheap. I think this was a great buy, an absolutely great buy, $3,600. I, I think it should have brought closer to 5,000 and maybe 6,000. So that was, a, that was a nice buy, but beautiful drawing on it. Nicely done um, all the way around, looked look good. All right, and then on to, uh, and the other sale that you, you, you might have wanted to check out was this one, the Tremont sale here in Massachusetts run by uh, uh, a couple of guys I've known for years, uh, uh, Jimmy Callahan and, and, and um, Brett Downer. Uh, they, they're old time dealers, they've been around forever. And uh, they had a very good sale, an interesting sale and some, and some, some rather surprising results um, uh, based on their estimates, but they, they, they tend to be very, have very modest estimates in most of their sales. So we're gonna take a look and see what happened. All right, there was this, there was this Kangxi period lo um, uh, lobed, um, uh, or shaped uh, uh, rim bowl, uh, very nice looking with a scalloped edge. It was good size. It was uh, nine inches in diameter, estimated at 1000 to $1,500, ended up selling for $4,200. All right, good result. And then there was this. I thought this was a great looking little bronze, um, uh, about five and a half inches tall or so, late Ming, early Qing, uh, estimated at only two or $300. Um, and it ended up selling for 850, and I don't think that was a lot for that. I think that that was probably uh, I could see this on another day bringing 1500 to 2000. It was beautifully cast, uh, nice looking object, 
And um, these guys are good. They don't mess around with, 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 the, with the bidders, the estimates. They put the stuff up there, they had to sell it. And um, this, was, this was a nice thing. Do keep an eye on them. And then they had this. They had a, a, a very interesting um, 100 antique screen, they called. These were made during the Joseon period in Korea, uh, 19th century, early to mid 19th century. Um, and this one was in rough shape, um, uh, to put it mildly. But these are very, very, very rare. I remember seeing one of these uh, that actually came out of a collection in New Hampshire. Uh, southern New Hampshire, Dublin area back uh, in the uh, uh, late 80s, early 90s, and it sold for a quarter of a million dollars. It was in perfect condition, but very, very similar screen. And uh, here's one that's in, in rough shape, um, to put it mildly, estimated at three to 5,000. I think they were right on the estimate. Uh, but at any rate, uh, somebody had to have it and has a means to restore it, and it ended up selling for $70,000. All right, and then on to this, the bronze. Uh, this was a great incense burner. Beautiful color, and it was big. This was 13 inches wide. Had a fifteen dollars to $20,000 estimate that I didn't think was at all unreasonable. Um, it's an early Qing one. They had dated in 18th or 19th century. My personal opinion is, is that this is early, eight, er, early Qing. Um, from what I'm seeing, the way the elephant is done, the handles and so forth. They did these later, but the quality of the work just looks awfully good. So I'd say it's, it's, it's you know, early Qing, 18th century. And uh, wonderful patina, beautiful surface. Very, very nice, beautifully done. And big, 13 inches. This thing is this big. Um, ended up selling for just $10,000, which I think was a, a, a great buy, plus the buyer's premium. Uh, these numbers don't include the buyer's premium. But I thought that was an awfully nice bronze. Awfully nice. All right. And then onto this, the Peking glass, 18th or 19th century, uh, but but done in turquoise, which is rather unusual. Had a chin lung mark on the bottom. Um, and you can never really trust these very readily. Uh, but, but sometimes they're right. And this one looked like it probably was right from what little I can see of it, the way the base is shaped, the way it's polished and so forth. Um, there's, there's there's some sort of old paperwork on here. I don't know what that, that's from. Um, it may have, they may have said in the description. I didn't know they didn't. Uh, but at any rate, it was it was good looking. It was a foot tall, had a six to $800 estimate, very modest, ended up selling for 3,200. All right, and then over to this, Canton enamel warming pot on stand. We've seen these before. They do turn up periodically. They, they, you see them mostly coming out into Europe. Um, and uh, it's got these, uh, you know, the handles with the stirrup ends on it. Beautifully done. This one looked like it was in nice condition. Estimated at five to 8,000, which I think was a bit heavy handed. Um, that, I suspect that was a, uh, 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 and, it was, and it was bought from Frankel. Uh, there it is, uh, uh, Ea J. Frankel, um, so forth. Height overall, 14 inches. Uh, I think the estimate was a little heavy because it, these normally don't bring more than four or $5,000 at the most. And uh, more typically in the two to three thousand dollar range, and that's what it brought, which is fine. All right, I think the estimate was too high. And then this is uh, again back to Leland Little. There are a few other things I wanted to go over. Uh, for those of you that collect Satsuma, this is a really, really wonderful Satsuma vase from the Kikozan Studio, uh, but very unusual decoration. Really, this wasn't a big vase; it was only about six inches tall, but it was splendid quality, just absolutely splendid, beautifully done. And, uh, uh, and what's interesting is it's got, it's got marching, it looked like colonial soldiers in the background. Um, so there, there's, there's some sort of military implication here, but uh, uh, be, be beautifully done. Um, um, let's see here. Yeah, they, 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 they look like it's some sort of military procession with people leaving and so forth. But at any rate, it was a beautiful looking thing. And uh, marked on the bottom, of course, and uh, it was estimated uh, pretty reasonably, two, one to two thousand um, dollars. I had gotten in touch with them to find out how big this was because I, I, I sent them a message because I couldn't figure it out. It was seven and a quarter inches tall. They added that to the description, but a great thing. Sold for four thousand dollars, worth every penny. And then this a very pretty um, export uh, punch bowl from 1770 or so uh, that had a, a, a Eleanor Gordon receipt with it. This was, out of those of you that have been around for very long, <clears throat> wouldn't know about Eleanor Gordon. She wrote the book on Chinese export porcelain. She was a longtime 
um, a dealer. She was very active on the uh, show circuit for, for many, many years and handled some of the best export porcelain in America, sold a lot of stuff to museums. Um, uh, she was a very nice lady. I got to, I got to know her a little bit. Um, uh, my mother used to buy stuff from her, and she had great things. She had great things like this bowl. And somebody bought this bowl, I think, pretty reasonably. It's 50, it was 15 inches in diameter, and it went for $2,100 plus the, plus the premium. But meticulously well done, uh, very much in the Chinese taste, and uh, uh, big and uh, good provenance. So that, that's, a, that's a good package to own. That's a good thing to buy. And then they also had, this was also Leland, right? Yeah. They had these um, Shibiyama and, and silver and metalwork pieces with enamels. <clears throat> and, and there seems to be a, uh, uh, that we've seen it, we saw it a few weeks ago, there was an increase in interest in these things. And now this, these did well. Um, uh, I was curious about it. Uh, we had talked about them. They were on the global pages for uh, several weeks uh, leading up to the sale and uh, estimated at three to five thousand this went for six thousand plus the buyer's premium a very nice choreo and cover and it looked very complete it looked very complete the silver was a little tarnished which is normal and uh, that's for the new owner to work out and then this four to eight thousand estimate for this pair of vases uh, i thought these were fantastic and i'm not quite sure why they didn't bring more money uh, maybe they got overlooked maybe there was something wrong with them i don't know but uh, 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 great quality. How big were these? These were, what are they? Uh, uh, eight, nine inches with the stands, but superb quality. Absolutely superb. Uh, mother of pearl work on here. Beautiful, beautiful patination. Uh, just a, a, a great looking uh, um, a pair of vases. Absolutely elegant. And uh, somebody got them for $3,600 plus the premium. That's not bad. And this was the, the, the one of the, the 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 big things that we talked about this in, in the preview uh, for this sale was this this really fine Chinese uh, uh, ja Japanese rather silver and enamel chrysanthemum bowl. And when you pulled it in, if you took the time to do it and look at the quality, the detail of of, of this bowl, the details of the silver work was breathtaking. Um, this is as good as it gets. Um, uh, you know, the, the the Chinese never never did work like this. Uh, if you if you if you want to buy the finest uh, silver enameled silver that was ever done, you, you you go to Japan and this is what you get. Absolutely splendid, Jesus, just beautiful, and uh, it did it did great. It, it was estimated very low, eight eight to twelve hundred dollars, which is silly, and it ended up selling for seventy five hundred plus the premium. So all said and done, you're up around almost nine thousand dollars for that, but great quality, absolutely great quality. And then on to this, this was one of the, this was um, also at Leland Little. It was a, uh, a very nice um, Guangzhou Canton um, Hong scene. Um, it, had been, it had been relined, but a uh, very nice scene. Very, very atmospheric, uh, uh, but beautifully painted with its original Chinese export frame. Those are the frames they used to come with when they, these were done. They're never signed. Right, well, one in a thousand is signed. Uh, they had port painters that did these for the, for the owners, for the people doing trade there uh, during the first half of the 19th century, especially. And this was the kind of thing they did. This was estimated at five to ten thousand, and it went under the wire at at four thousand dollars. So again, the old line: leave a bid for heaven's sakes. You never know. All right. And then over at eBay, they had a pretty good week too. Uh, we're going to talk about oh, probably eight or nine things here. Uh, one of them was this, another one of these transitional period bottles. We just saw a pair of them um, that were a little bit different, that's, that were one D that, that sold for uh, uh, 22000 Here's a single, and it sold for 1900 and uh, change. Um, uh, nice one Lee, uh, to transitional period bottle. Uh, had some fritting on the edge, and somebody, I think, got a relatively good buy. All right, and then on to this. Uh, I threw this in the in the in the um, in the in the newsletter page on on the, on the bit amount just because I thought the frame was so amazing. And what was interesting is that the seller didn't apparently know that the the, the figure in the frame is is an old photograph of Pu Yi, um, and he was the uh, last emperor of China, technically speaking. And uh, he, he never really got to be emperor for very long, about a year in his sort of a figurehead position. But this was he, he had a fantastically interesting life from where he ended up and so forth. But uh, uh, this frame was absolutely superb quality, 
absolutely great and it's been polished many times that's why it's so shiny and new looking whoever owned this polished it regularly uh, but it was a beautiful 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 frame one of the nicest I've seen and somebody got it for I, I think a steal three hundred and forty one dollars uh, and what size was this it was it was a uh, pretty good size right was not it um, yeah six inches tall uh, 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 20 30 inches uh, 30 centimeters high. it was a foot tall and the opening the for, for the uh, for the picture was uh, about uh, about five by five by four so this was a nice big frame foot tall and somebody got it I think for, this was maybe one of the best buys of the month um, was getting picking up this frame for under under if this had sold for a thousand dollars I wouldn't have been at all surprised it was such good quality just such good quality all the way through and with a picture of Pu Yi and then on to this this 18th century uh, Kengshi Amari dish uh, uh, had, had some nibbles to the edge and so forth some fritting but a uh, very nice plate good iron red decoration good cobalt the cobalt looked great on it and the gilding was all intact it had a little rim nicks that was it sold for $80 um, with $20 shipping here to the US from England I think that was a, a, a very good buy if you're a Kangxi buyer um, you know you see things like this just leave a bid just leave a bid it had 19 bids um, you know leave a hundred dollars on it and, and this is what you would have gotten it was a very nice plate and also pure snow white porcelain beautifully done and then this the late Qing dragon um, a vase with the uh, 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 you know scrifato uh, 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 a ground decoration here um, running around at these little wave patterns so you get a better look at it there they are but very very finely worked this is late Qing but it's good late Qing and when you see these things always check the groundwork in the background and then also check the detail work of the iron where they did the iron red decoration and you'll see that the face of the dragon is meticulously done absolutely meticulously done it had a chin lung mark on it which wasn't correct it was apocryphal but uh, uh, nicely done this 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 sort of ivory toned foot looked good uh, this was a quality piece of porcelain all the way around and uh, people liked it and they chased it up to thousand seventy four dollars but it was very good quality it's always about the quality and then this this Mayping vase they had dated this is 18th or 19th century I tend to think it was probably mid to late 19th century uh, judging by the uh, the foot rim and, the, and this uh, uh, grinding back of uh, glaze that flowed over the foot but it was still a heck of a fine vase a beautiful Mayping form and um, uh, you know monochromes are still uh, very very popular monochromes have, have been holding up quite well for the last uh, two or three years uh, there are people out there that want them and uh, uh, we saw it we've seen it at Sotheby's at Christie's um, there was that that bottle we looked at that was in the Sotheby sale in London that brought I mean in, in Paris that we just saw that red one that I like so much it sold for uh, uh, significant money um, more than they expected and then on to this the uh, uh, Ayers uh, catalog of the Top Capi Serre Museum. This was a famous series of books. It was written by Regina Crowell and John Ayers, two renowned experts on Chinese art. And they went through and, and went, went to the Top Capi Museum and they cataloged in Istanbul and they cataloged their collection many years ago. Um, I forget when this book was done in the, in the, in the 90s. Was it that long? And it was a numbered set. Here you go. 1,500 copies of this edition have been printed. Um, uh, at, at, but at any rate, uh, so it was published by Sotheby's. One of the best series of books ever done on the subject. There it was. And everybody wants it. Uh, uh, I have a set. Uh, it's, it's a great series of books. And uh, it sold for $2,002. But they only made 1,500 copies. And the thing with, with Asian art reference books, most of the time the really good ones the ones that are done lavishly in color and have lots of good information in them they are rarely ever reprinted uh, because they sell so few the first time um, in the book world it was relatively small amount in the book world they may print up uh, a couple of thousand copies 5,000 copies or something but unless unless the the publisher is getting a big subsidy from a museum or an institution they really can't afford to do it again uh, so so that's why you see such um, wild prices um, on certain books that don't seem that old you know that were the Ming book that was um, uh, done on the British Museum collection 
um, new, I don't know what it was. I bought it, I think it was around 60 or $70. Today, that book is $1,200, $1,300. And it's only been, you know, 20 odd years. But it's because they don't reprint them. So when you, the time to buy, if you see a book that's coming up for sale, um, uh, that's, that's, that seems to have great content, well illustrated, profusely illustrated by a recognized person, top quality printing, buy it when it comes out. Don't wait a couple of years until they run out because when they run out, they get expensive. All right, they get very expensive. And uh, then on to this, this was a 19th century jar done in the Kung Shi style. I just thought it was attractive. I think the lid was too big, but that's me. It, it looks like an over. It looks like a. Looks like somebody. It's like like a somebody put a huge baseball hat on a little kid. Um, I, I would prefer to see a different lid. But that said, uh, the decoration was good and very much in keeping with Kangxi uh, uh, export workmanship. Uh, but done much later, done in the 19th century, and it ended up selling for three hundred ninety-eight dollars, which is fine. Which is fine. And then on to this opium lamps. Um, I, you know, they don't allow drug paraphernalia on eBay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh, these are nice. These are late Qing um, uh, opium lamps, probably in pack. They look like they might have been made of pak tong. Uh, they still had their glass, which is very interesting. Often these are broken, the chimneys, the glass chimneys are broken off of them. Uh, but they, there were, there were uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. This was a great little group, and somebody got them all for not eight hundred and ninety-two dollars. Why this seller sold them this way, I don't know, um, because uh, he, he said they're silver. I don't think they're silver. I think they're probably Pactong, which is just as good, frankly. Uh, 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 he apparently doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't know much about them. That's fair, you know. That's the way it is. Anyway. Somebody bought them all for eight hundred and ninety-two dollars, and typically these sell for three or four hundred dollars a piece. So that was a that was a great buy for a um, um, uh, opium lamp opium um, lamp collector, and then over to this this uh, 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 silk jacket, uh, nicely done late Qing. Uh, look it looked to be uh, in pretty good shape. There was a little bit of minor staining on it, and I think somebody got a relatively good buy for the prices that silk has been bringing for the last couple of years. Seven hundred thirty dollars, I think, is very very fair, very fair. And uh, then over to this, this clobbered Kangxi bottle. This was interestingly done. I, I, I don't remember the last time I've seen a, a clobbered vase done in this pal color palette, especially the use of this yellow at the top. Uh, but it was an interesting pot. There it is, the bottom, um, you know, uh, sort of gummy and chewed out. Looks like it's got some old, what is that? Like, like maybe it was on a glued, glued to some sort of a stand or something and then yanked off uh, here because I see leftover hide glue, which they used to, when they glued these onto stands, I've seen them where they just would basically pour hide glue all over it and stick the, the piece on there and leave it there for a week and let it harden. At any rate, uh, this went cheaply, uh, to just, uh, just to say it, $251. That was a bargain. You know, leave a bid. When you, when you see something, if you saw this and you thought, ah, it's going to go for, you know, it's going to go for $800, leave a bid on things. Always remember to leave a bid, even if it's not a serious bid. Um, I've won great things on unserious bids, and so you, you, you can do it. All right, and then these, these Lao Chan Li vases, uh, Cloisonne, Lei Ching, very nice quality, beautiful color yellow with the original stands, it looks like. Um, nice uh, uh, example. The, the Cloisonne looked to be in very, very good condition, not damaged in any way, marked on the bottom. And these are later, these are, these are later, but uh, very desirable. Um, he, he was a pretty well-known um, enameler, and uh, uh, did uh, you know he was recognized during his lifetime as being a good worker, and uh, he got they, these brought twenty-two hundred dollars, and these weren't big. These were uh, what are they nine nine uh, eleven inches, eleven inches tall. They weren't huge vases. They were just eleven inches tall, but very 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 fine quality. Again, it's always about the quality, and then this this uh, sort of soft celadon ground. Um, or, or, or uh, light blue. It's hard to say what, what you'd call this with slip decoration. Uh, nice looking vase with a chin lung mark on the bottom. I don't think this was a chin lung vase. I think this was probably um, a, a early Chai Ching period. Um, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't look, it doesn't appear to be chin lung to me. The glaze seems a little thick and so forth. But great quality. The quality on this, again, very good, no damage, nice handles on it. Ended up selling for $2,711. Uh, but again, monochromes, it's basically a monochrome, are still popular. 
<clears throat> and then on to this. These were, um, I threw these in there, and I know most of you recognize right away that these were not Chinese. These were Japanese, but they were very big, 38 centimeters, 15 inches tall, uh, real muscular looking pieces of uh, Champlain Bay. Uh, 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 beautiful work with the with these with the sort of almost art deco. They're not art deco. They were made before that, but sort of art deco looking um, um, uh, flanges coming up the side, and then this reticulated bamboo base, and then a solid base that's been patinated, and all this just a ton of work in these. And these are big, 15 inches. Somebody got them both for 686 dollars absolutely cheap uh, they should have brought 2,000 and I, I really mean that the, these are, are absolutely beautiful and I think the problem was was that the seller uh, put, put them up as Chinese so people who collect Japanese and they browse through the eBay listings they may not have even looked at these and they just went completely under the radar because a buyer of Chinese stuff a Chinese buyer a buyer in China is not going to want these and they'll just say, oh, those are Japanese and just move on. And somebody came along, recognized them. I hope it was one of you. I hope it was one of you. I almost bought these just, and I have nowhere to put them in my house right now because there's so much stuff. But I almost bought them. Um, I was uh, thinking, I said, I'll put a couple of thousand on them just because they're, they're so unusual looking and they look to be in great condition. At any rate, somebody got them. The shipping was a little heavy, but they're big, 15 inches tall each. Uh, $120 and it sounds like a lot but it actually isn't for packaging that size so uh, that's the way it goes and that was sort of it for um, um, uh, what was happening on uh, on um, uh, eBay last week and what was going on on the global member pages and here are, here's a couple of things that are coming up this week Whoop. And on the site uh, this this week, we'll be adding this, a triple gourd Kangxi bottle. This is from Migulari over in the UK, very reliable seller. And uh, this is just some of the stuff. And also this, this is rather large uh, 18th century China trade uh, export teapot. This is a beast of a pot. It's a big one. If you're a teapot collector, you want to check this one out. It's a good looking one. It's got this uh, basket weave pattern in the uh, porcelain that you see on the better examples from China. Uh, very nice big strap handles on it very big very well done perfectly executed late 19 late 18th century uh, nice piece it's up to 208 dollars ought to go for seven, six or eight hundred but it's it's still in the running and then i'm going to put this in there this is a, a, a purple glaze zun vase uh, uh they have dated it uh, erroneously as kang shi period i don't think it's kang shi i think it's 19th century but uh, a be beautiful quality nicely done uh, a good looking bottom on it uh, I just, this to me looks more like a 19th century pot but nice color it's got a tiny nick out of the rim but uh, beautiful glaze beautiful beautiful glaze and it's up to 146 dollars this closes on saturday it closes tomorrow uh, you want to check that out if you're a monochrome buyer and then this this one lee plate which has gotten no attention surprisingly um, i don't know why it looks absolutely fine uh, but very neatly drawn, very neatly drawn. Uh, the back of it looks fine, uh, typical Wan Lee foot. This is not a Japanese example, because the Japanese did make these at the Arita Kilns, they copied them. Uh, this is not a Japanese uh, Arita copy, uh, but boy, nice looking plate. And it's good size, it's, uh, I think it was, what is it, 12 inches or 10 inches in diameter? How big is this thing? Um, 12 inches, a little over 12 inches in diameter, so it's technically a charger. It's about 13 inches or so in width. And uh, then on to this, the last, this is uh, from uh, Joni's up in Canada. This very, very good pair of uh, 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 Meiji period uh, bronzes. They are big. These things are big. Uh, I'm going to give you the exact height on these. If you're a bronze collector, you want to check this. They're marked. Uh, you'll have to look up who the maker is. There it is on the bottom. Um, uh, these are 24 inches tall, two feet tall, uh, but great quality, really good quality with these giant fish mounted on the side, heavy, heavy relief work all the way around. And this was very typical of the kind of stuff that the Japanese, uh, when they did the Paris exhibition uh, and uh, exposition in the, uh, in the 18, uh, I guess it was in the 1870s, this was the kind of stuff they sent over there to wow the, the, the foreigners with this hawk on the top, beautifully done, beautifully, beautifully done. Uh, they're up to $743. I suspect they're gonna probably double or triple that by the 
time they're done. Uh, but the shipping is reasonable. Uh, if you're wondering about that, uh, they've got them up. The shipping up here is forty nine ninety five. How they ship those for forty nine dollars from Canada to, to Gloucester, I don't know. But they said they can do it, so hold them to it. Uh, but beautiful looking pair of vases, absolutely great, and um, uh, and they look like they're in good condition. You know, you double check the condition always, but that's it. All right, and that's about it for the week. It's been it's been a, a busy, busy, busy week. Uh, the global pages have been active. Uh, a lot of new stuff is added there. We're going to be updating those tomorrow morning. We'll be updating the uh, newsletter page on the bitamount.com site uh, uh, today. It'll be done by the time you see it. And, uh, and we go on, okay? And uh, we're working on a video uh, that I want to get out as soon as I can on, um, on a bit of history. Uh, we're going to start doing videos a little bit on, on, on some things to do with the arts and Chinese history and sort of weave them together and uh, uh, sort of the backstories of what was go what's go what went on and, 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 and what, what happened uh, around certain events in time uh, involving the, uh, China and Japan and Asia and so forth. So we're working on that. All right. Uh, thank you for subscribing um, to the channel here. If you haven't yet, please do. Uh, visit vidamount.com and um, check out the newsletter page. Join the global member pages. That's uh, one of the ways we pay for all this. Incidentally, I, I've mentioned it before, is that uh, um, we, we, we pay for the sites and the plugins and the hosting and, and the, 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 the reference section, which is on a server in, in Hong Kong that we, we maintain and, um, and, the, and so forth. Uh, it, it, this is how we pay for it. We pay for it with subscriptions. Uh, for those of you who subscribe or, you, you, you know, and, and, and that sort of thing, it helps us out a great deal with all that because uh, uh, we do this for fun, but uh, somebody still has to pay for it all. <laughs> and I don't mind paying for it, but it's great to get some help. All right, so thanks a lot. Uh, have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy the enjoy your uh, summer days and uh, uh, check back uh, next week uh, for updates and so forth and what we what's going on. All right, thank you very much. Bye bye.